How did Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker first meet Asajj Ventress? If you've watched their encounters in the Clone Wars TV show, you've definitely noticed that they're already familiar with each other. While we didn't get to learn how they met in the animated TV show, we do get to learn about it in the book called Brotherhood, which follows Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker as they attempt to defuse a tense situation on the planet Kato Nemoidia. Yes, that business on Kato Nemoidia that Obi-Wan refers to in Revenge of the Sith is in fact the story about how they met Asajj Ventress for the first time. In the book Brotherhood, a terrorist attack on the Kato Nemoidia capital, a city called Zara, left the people of the planet in chaos. The people wanted to remain neutral in the Clone Wars, and despite the actions of Newt Gunray, the Trade Federation publicly wanted to maintain neutrality as well. However, this terrorist attack on the capital of Kato Nemoidia left the people looking for answers. More specifically, they were looking for someone to blame. They didn't know for sure if it was the Separatists or the Republic who had bombed their capital but they definitely seemed like they were ready to lay the blame at the feet of the Republic, thanks to the manipulation of Count Dooku. When news of this terrorist attack reached the Republic, Palpatine reached out to the Jedi via hologram to inform them of the catastrophe. During this meeting, they learned that Count Dooku had challenged the Republic to explain themselves by requesting the physical presence of Chancellor Palpatine on Cato Nemoidia, a visit that would supposedly act as a political statement of cooperation between the Republic and the Separatists. However, while the Jedi agreed that cooperation and peace were worthy goals, they saw this as a trap. Obi-Wan Kenobi, a temporary member of the Jedi Council who was filling in the late Coleman Treber's position, proposed that a Jedi go in Palpatine's place to act as an emissary and investigator on the planet. Palpatine was skeptical of the plan, but after a day of research, Obi-Wan returned to the Jedi Council chambers to propose a full strategy to the Council and to the Chancellor about how to handle this delicate situation on Kato Nemoidia. During this meeting, they were joined by Count Dooku and Minister Aluv Ayam via hologram. Aluv Ayam was the Minister of Defense of Kato Nemoidia. The meeting went well for Obi-Wan, with his newly updated proposal largely being accepted, though Dooku and Minister Ayam did request several things. For one, they asked that Obi-Wan come to Kato Nemoidia completely alone with no means of communicating with the Republic. Yeah, that doesn't sound sus at all. And they also requested that the Separatists send their own emissary to investigate the bombing alongside Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan agreed to the terms and stated that no matter what the findings, he would not be biased in his investigation. This emissary, of course, turned out to be more than a mere diplomat, as Obi-Wan would eventually find out. Upon arriving on Kato Nemoidia and meeting the Separatist emissary, he quickly deduced that she was not who she seemed. And of course, she was none other than Asajj Ventress, sent by Count Dooku to ensure that the Nemoidians sided with the Separatists and blame the Republic for the recent bombing on their capital city. In this endeavor, she planted evidence that pointed to the Republic and also manipulated a Nemoidian royal guard into blowing up other sections of the Nemoidian capital in an attempt to place further blame onto the Republic. Her attempt to twist the Nemoidian emotions against Obi-Wan and the Republic almost succeeded, but inevitably failed. Obi-Wan, with the help of Anakin Skywalker, defeated Asajj on Kato Nemoidia and were able to secure evidence that exonerated the Republic. Or, at the very least, they secured evidence that made it clear that the Republic was not implicit in the attack, though it was obvious that there was something more going on behind the scenes. Regardless, the people of Kato Nemoidia maintained their neutrality for the time being, while the Trade Federation 
maintained their public position of neutrality despite the actions of Newt Gunray and his supposedly separate faction within the organization. If you haven't read the book Brotherhood by Mike Chen, I highly recommend it. I finished it a while ago, and I absolutely loved it. If you're a fan of the Clone Wars and or Anakin Skywalker and or Obi-Wan Kenobi, then this book, I think, will be a satisfying read for you. It takes place just after the book Queen's Hope, which happens to take place right after the movie Attack of the Clones. So this book, Brotherhood, as well as Queen's Hope, sort of act as the unofficial beginning to the Clone Wars TV show, as it sets up Anakin and Obi-Wan's relationship going forward, now that they're both Jedi Knights, and also shows us why Obi-Wan and Yoda chose to give Anakin a Padawan. As always though, thank you so much for watching, I sincerely hope you enjoyed the video.